Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Trigon Henry and on this channel I make videos all about programming, cybersecurity, fitness and motivation. In today's video, I will go through the fundamentals of ethical hacking. So, if you want to know more about ethical hacking, ensure you watch this video until the end. So, let's begin with what exactly hacking is. Hacking is the process of exploiting security flaws in a computer system or network to obtain personal or business information. An example of hacking is using an automated tool to crack the password of a Wi-Fi network. Hacking done without permission is considered to be illegal. However, hacking done with permission is considered legal. Many businesses hire cybersecurity professionals like myself to pen test their systems and networks to identify security vulnerabilities and remediate them. Now, why? This is done to prevent nefarious individuals from hacking their systems. People who hack into networks and systems with permission are called ethical hackers and the process is called ethical hacking. So now that we have a basic understanding of what ethical hacking is and who are ethical hackers, let us take a look at the various types of hackers. Firstly, we have black hat hackers. Black hat hackers are also known as security crackers. These people hack into systems illegally to steal money or to achieve their own illegal goals. Black hat hacking is illegal. Secondly, we have white hat hackers. White hat hackers are also known as ethical hackers. These people hack systems, but they only hack the systems they have permission to hack. White hat hacking is legal. Finally, we have gray hat hackers. Gray hat hackers are a hybrid between black hat hackers and white hat hackers. They can hack any system even if they don't have permission to test the system's security. But they will never steal money or damage the system. Sometimes gray hat hacking is considered illegal and sometimes it's considered legal. So now that we know about the different types of hackers, let us look at four different types of cyber attacks. Firstly, we have a malware attack. A malware is short for malicious software and is used as a single term to refer to viruses, spyware, ransomware, adware, and trojans. Next, we have a phishing attack. This is a very common cyber attack. Phishing is an attack often used to steal the user's data. Example, Facebook login credentials. Next, we have a password attack. 
This is also a very common cyber attack. A password attack is simply when a hacker tries to steal your password. And finally, we have a denial of service attack. The purpose of this attack is to make a device, network, or application inaccessible to its intended users. Nefarious individuals accomplish this by flooding the target with traffic that triggers a crash. Now, let's look at the phases of ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is divided into six different phases. Let us look at these phases to understand the process an ethical hacker follows. The first thing any ethical hacker does before launching an attack is to learn as much as possible about, this, about the target system, network, or application. This step is called reconnaissance. Tools such as Nmap and Maltigo are used to do reconnaissance. Next, the ethical hacker tries to identify vulnerabilities that exist in the target system. Tools such as Nmap, Nessus, and OpenVAS are used to scan for vulnerabilities. This is known as scanning. Once the ethical hacker identifies security vulnerabilities, he then tries to exploit them using tools such as Metasploit and Warp Suite. This is known as gaining access. Once the ethical hacker gains access to the target system, he tries to maintain his access for further attacks. This is accomplished by using a tool such as Metasploit to install backdoors on the target system. This phase is known as maintaining access. The next phase is clearing tracks. An intelligent hacker always clears all evidence. This is where the attacker will do things such as clearing event logs, erasing the command history, and shredding the history file. The final phase is reporting. In this phase, the assessor compiles a report with the findings and the impact of each finding. Tools used, vulnerabilities found, processes used to exploit them, and remediation measures to be taken. Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about any of the tools I mentioned while discussing the phases of ethical hacking. I have a video in which I talk about the best penetration testing tools out there. So, now that we have looked at the various phases of ethical hacking, let us talk about some of the basic skills required to become an ethical hacker. The fourth skill that is required is knowledge of networking. You need to know how networks work, how routers, firewalls, and other network devices work. Also, you need coding knowledge. Understanding programming helps cybersecurity experts examine software and discover security vulnerabilities. Another skill that is required is knowledge of operating systems. You must have a strong knowledge of operating system environments such as Windows, Linux, and 
Mac OS. Essentially, you should be comfortable working with any operating system. Note, Kali Linux is the most widely used Linux distribution for ethical hacking and penetration testing. Also, you need to have good problem solving skills. An ethical hacker must be a strategic thinker and a good problem solver. And finally, soft skills are required. Security professionals often need to communicate complex subjects to people who might not have much of a technical background. Therefore, you must have excellent oral and written communication skills to effectively communicate with management and other staff. Finally, let's talk about some ethical hacking certificates. The EC Council offers the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification. Also, there is the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. And there is the CompTIA Security Plus Certification. These are some of the certificates that will help you to land a job as an ethical hacker at any company. So let me know in the comment section if you want to become an ethical hacker. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this and hit that bell icon to get the latest updates. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you. See you soon.